Hello guys, welcome back to Supersonic Flyer, a single platform for all the tales about AME, and also welcome to this video of 8.2 Aerodynamics Part 2. If you haven't watched our previous video of Module 8.2 Part 1, then click on the i icon to see a detailed video. So subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon, so that you never miss an update. Let's get started with our topic without wasting time. Today we will discuss about Submodule 8.2 Part 2. This video is the continuation of the previous video 8.2 Part 1. Coming to the next topic, thrust weight lift and drag. There are four forces that act upon an aircraft in flight, that is thrust weight lift and drag. First let us discuss thrust. Thrust is the force that moves the aircraft forward, or thrust is the forward force produced by the engine, that overcomes the force of drag, weight or gravity. It is defined as the force that pulls the aircraft towards the earth, or weight is the force of gravity acting downward upon everything that goes into the aircraft. Lift. Lift is the force that pushes the aircraft upward. Drag. Drag is the force that exerts a braking action to hold the aircraft back. Or drag is a backward deterrent force and is caused by the disruption of the airflow by the wings, fuselage, and protruding objects. Further exploration of the relationship between the four forces of flight is in submodule 3. Coming to the next topic, aerodynamic resultant. An aircraft in flight is continuously affected by thrust weight lift and drag. When the forces are not in balance, a resultant or resulting force will exist. This is the combined force of all of the forces acting on the aircraft. In all types of line the flat calculations are based on the magnitude and directions of the four forces. The forces of lift and drag are the direct result of the relationship between the relative wind and the aircraft. The force of the lift always acts perpendicular to the relative wind, and the force of drag always acts parallel to, and in the same direction as a relative wind. These forces are actually the components that produce a resultant lift force on the wing. Coming to the next topic, generation of lift and drag. As you all know that, lift is the force that pushes the aircraft upwards. The angle of attack is the angle between the relative wind and the court line of the wing. Lift can be increased by increasing the angle of attack, wing area, velocity, density of the air, or by changing the shape or size of the airfoil. When the force of lift on an aircraft's wing equals to the force of gravity, the aircraft maintains level flight. Drag is the force that opposes the thrust created to move the aircraft forward. Induced drag is an inevitable consequence of the creation of lift. The greater the lift, the greater the pressure differential between these two flows of air, which increases the induced drag. Since lift is able to be increased by increasing angle of attack, so too is induced drag. Coming to the next topic, lift and drag coefficients. The lift coefficient is a ratio between lift, pressure and dynamic pressure, and is a function of the shape of the wing and angle of attack. It is the ratio of drag pressure to dynamic pressure. The drag coefficient increases with the angle of attack. Coming to the next topic, lift by drag ratio. The lift to drag ratio, L by D, is the amount of lift generated by a wing or airfoil compared to its drag. A ratio of L by D indicates airfoil efficiency. Aircraft with higher L by D ratios are more efficient than those with lower L by D ratios. Coming to the next topic, angle of attack. As stated before, the cord of an airfoil or wing section is an imaginary straight line that passes through the section from the leading edge to the trailing edge. The angle of attack is defined as the angle between the cord line of the wing and the direction of the relative wind. On each part of an airfoil or wing surface, a small force is present. This force is of a different magnitude and direction from any forces acting on other areas, forward or rearward from this point. The sum of forces is called the resultant force or resultant lift. The point of intersection of the resultant force line with the cord line of the airfoil is called the center of pressure, CP. The center of pressure moves forward with increasing angle of attack and moves backwards as the angle of attack decreases. The effect of increasing angle of attack on the center of pressure is shown in figure. If the angle of attack changes the aircraft altitude changes. When the angle of attack is increases gradually toward a positive angle of attack, the lift component increases rapidly up to a certain point and then suddenly begins to drop off. 
During this action the drag component increases slowly at first, then rapidly as lift begins to drop off. If the angle of attack increases beyond a certain point, then lift begins to decrease. The angle at which this occurs is called the critical angle of attack. When this occurs, the amount of lift drops and drag becomes excessive. The force of gravity exerts itself, and the nose of the aircraft drops. This is a stall, thus, the burble point is a stalling angle. The efficiency of a wing is measured in terms of the lift to drag ratio. The shape of the airfoil is the factor that determines the angle of attack. Coming to the next topic drag. Drag is a force acting opposite to the relative motion of any object moving with respect to a surrounding fluid. There are many different types of drag. The most common are parasite drag, induced drag and wave drag. First let us discuss parasite drag. Parasite drag is defined as the drag that is not associated with the production of lift. Parasite drag is caused by moving a solid object through a fluid medium. The components of parasite drag are form drag, friction drag or skin friction drag and interference drag. Form drag. Form drag which results from the aerodynamic resistance to motion due to the shape of the aircraft. The example shows that the relative wind across a flat plate results in a leading edge stagnation point at the front of the plate that contains very high static pressure. Friction drag. Friction drag or skin friction drag which is related to the smoothness or roughness of the aircraft surfaces. Friction drag is created in the boundary layer. Turbulent flow creates more friction drag than a laminar flow due to its greater interaction with the surface of the airplane. Interference drag. Interference drag is generated by the mixing of airflow streamlines between airframe components such as the wing and the fuselage. The engine pylon and the wing, or, in the case of a military or other special purpose aircraft, between the airframe and attached external stores such as fuel tanks, weapons, or sensor pods. Induced drag. Induced drag is an inevitable consequence of lift and is produced by the passage of an aerofoil, example wing or tailplane, through the air. In level flight, the aerodynamic properties of a wing or rotor produce a required lift, but this can be obtained only at the expense of a certain penalty. The name given to this penalty is induced drag. Induced drag is inherent whenever an airfoil is producing lift, and, in fact, this type of drag is inseparable from the production of lift. Consequently, it is always present if lift is produced. A direct consequence of this is a continual spilling of air upwards around the wingtip phenomenon called tip effect or end effect. Wave drag. Wave drag is a force or drag that retards the forward movement of an airplane in both supersonic and transonic flight as a consequence of the formation of shock waves. Shock waves radiate a considerable amount of energy, resulting in drag on the aircraft. This wave drag can be reduced by incorporating one or more aerodynamic design features, such as wing sweep, ultra-thin wings, fuselage shape, anti-shock bodies, and supercritical airfoils. Coming to the next topic drag and airspeed. There is an airspeed at which drag is minimum, and in theory, this is the maximum range speed. However, flight at this speed is unstable because a small decrease in speed results in an increase in drag and a further fall in speed. In practice, for stable flight, maximum range is achieved at a speed a little above the minimum drag speed, where a small speed decrease results in a reduction in drag. Parasitic drag increases with the square of the airspeed, while induced drag, being a function of lift, is greater when maximum lift is being developed, usually at lower speed. That's it for 8.2 aerodynamics, stay tuned for 8.3 theory of flight. If you find the video interesting and informative then please like the video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe Supersonic Flyer.